Hi everyone, my name is Hannah, uh, and I want to thank you all so much for taking the time to listen to my testimony today. I'm so excited to share with you all how Jesus has worked in my life. I was raised as a practicing Catholic by my parents since I was born, pretty much. Uh, my parents, however, were not always very faith-filled people themselves. My mom was actually a Protestant, and she had no understanding toward the Catholic faith because of her own upbringing. Even as a Christian, though, she was not practicing at all. Her family were the cool surfer people who lived in Tremor, where I'm from, and she would often skip school to go surfing. Uh, she was actually the Irish surfing champion back in her day. So she was very cool, but did not practice her faith at all. And then there was my dad. So my dad dropped out of school to become a mechanic because his dad was a mechanic. And so, of course, that meant that he had a lot of cars. He loved driving fast and ripping around the country on his motorbike. However, this led to my dad getting into a car accident uh, when he was quite young, when he was 19 years old. Uh, and tragically, his girlfriend ended up dying in this car accident. This led him to a deep depression in his life because he blamed himself for her death to the point where he tried to take his own life. But by the prayer of his father, my granddad, he was miraculously saved. This was the beginning of my dad's conversion, but even though he was healed, his conversion didn't happen overnight. By, but in the end, both my parents experienced the personal love of God and grew in their faith together through the guidance of Jesus. My mom converted to Catholicism and they got married in the Catholic Church and raised me to very much know and love God. So I grew up hearing that God was my father, my friend, and that if I ever needed help, to call on him and he would help me. And as a child, of course, I believed my parents that God was good, but it was kind of my parents' faith being projected onto me rather than my own genuine love for God. This, however, changed when I was quite young. So when I was four, I went on a mini school trip with my preschool. Um, a lot of the older kids came too, so I was so excited. I was like, dang, I'm one of the big kids now. I'm going on my first trip. Uh, it was really just a room with two bathrooms inside, and we went there for a day of fun and games. Now, the one rule we had was we had to ask if we wanted to go to the bathroom uh, so that they could keep track of us. But me being my shy four-year-old self was too scared to ask if I could go. So I just went and thought it wouldn't be an issue. However, when I came out, the door was locked and everyone was gone. And I remember just thinking, I am all alone and I have no one. And I started bawling, crying. Um, this is when I remembered my parents always telling me that if I was ever in trouble, to call on God and he would help me. So for the first time in my life, I made my own personal prayer to God without the, uh, the help of my parents. And I remember in my prayer, I asked God if he could drive down from heaven in his car to come pick me up and bring me back to my mom and dad. He didn't drive down from heaven, but he did send my mom for me. Now, the door was still locked, so my mom couldn't get in. So she called through this window to me, and she told me that I was going to have to go through this window. It was too high for me to reach, and it was too small for me to fit through. But she prayed, and the next thing I knew, I was going through the window into my mom's arms. And I know it seems very small, and it's a big decision for a four-year-old, but this was the moment I knew God was good and that Jesus was my best friend. So great. Jesus was my best friend, and I talked to him about everything. My family's faith was still very strong, and now I had my own individuality in my relationship with Jesus amongst my parents' faith. My family decided to start hosting a lot of prayer meetings in my house to bring more people to Jesus, and in these, we did a lot of praise and worship and prayer. And even to this day, we have some sort of prayer meeting nearly every day in my house. I loved this side of my faith, but as Catholics, we were going to Mass every Sunday. And I came to the realization that Mass was so boring for me. I couldn't understand what standing up and sitting down and kneeling had to do with my best friend, Jesus. Honestly, I just didn't understand the Mass at all. I'm sure my parents tried to tell me what it was about, but in my head it was nothing but boring. Now saying that, I was never ashamed of my faith when I was young. I remember one time in primary school, a boy in my class said that he couldn't believe people wasted an hour of their lives going to Mass every week. And although at the time I agreed with him, I just couldn't stand him hating on my faith. 
So my big comeback at the time was to say, well, actually, it's only 40 minutes long. So this changed for me when I got to sixth class, however, when one of my good friends started to make some new friends and I wasn't exactly included in their new group. Uh, when this happened, I felt this fear of being all alone come back on me suddenly again, and I thought I had no one. Because of this, I made a decision in my mind that I could no longer be open and honest about my faith, and I would never openly admit to loving Jesus again, because it could be another reason why people could leave me behind and not want to be my friend. I remember one time, my mom came into my school with her friend to help her promote a new local summer faith camp, but because I was so ashamed, I forced her to sit in the back corner, and I told everyone she was only there because she knew the layout of the school, not because she had anything to do with the faith camp. And although I was invited, I did not attend the faith camp that year. And so began a long period of my life where the main thing that was important to me, more so than my faith, was making sure people liked me. This overtook my life, especially going into first year in school, where it was a new start, and nobody knew I was the religious girl. I went to an all-girls Catholic school in Waterford, and I wanted to make actual friends who liked me. I was able to succeed in this, and I made good friends, but I was making jokes that I knew weren't appropriate and just not acting the way I knew God wanted me to. I was so consumed with wanting people to like me that none of this behavior got me to take a look at myself. But God knows me so well that he got through to me in what seems like such a little thing, so because my dad used to be so a part of the world, he used to use a lot of bad language. So when he converted to Catholicism, uh, he ended up really, really disliking bad language. And because I'm such a daddy's girl, I also very much disliked bad language. And because I loved God so much when I was young, I resolved that I would try and never use bad language because I wanted to please God and make him happy. Um, but now in this new situation with my new friends obsessed with fitting in, I did. And I know it's not the worst thing to do by a long shot, but I knew I had compromised my relationship with God. I wanted to change, but my desire to be loved by people also didn't go away. And I found it very hard to be different and set apart the way God wanted me to be. At this point, in my second year of secondary school, I was still part of a youth group called the God Squad. So one night a week, I could actually express my deep love for God and be authentically myself. It was always my favorite day of the week, even though it was a Monday. So the summer after second year, when I was 14, I was once again asked if I would attend that local faith camp set up by my mom's friend. But me, thinking I was so cool, thought that the camp was going to be too babyish for me. Then I was told that I could be a helper and that all the people from my youth group were also going to this camp. And so I thought, okay, maybe it could be fun, and I agreed to go. Well, I was a helper, but unbeknownst to me, I was also put in the oldest group of the faith camp. But I'm so grateful I was there because at this camp, it gave me a, an, ex, an opportunity to experience God much deeper. For the week that the camp was on, we had mass every day and adoration available to us. And I was sitting there in adoration one of the days, and it was the first time I had probably ever really prayed before Jesus by myself on my own. And it hit me that that little host that was sitting there was truly Jesus, like God. Uh, I think I had been told that, of course, before, but the that the Eucharist was Jesus. But for some reason, that had never been clear to me until that point. And so in my head, I made this connection that if Jesus was present in this Eucharist before me, then it was really him who I was receiving every single week in Mass. And that just blew my mind. It was also the first time where I actually listened to the Mass readings every day. In fact, for the first time, I actually read my Bible by myself at home. And every time I did, the Mass readings at the camp the next day would always match the Bible reading I had looked at the night before. So God was really speaking to me and making me fall in love with the Mass more and more to the point where I would be so excited on Sundays from that point forward to go and experience scripture and receive Jesus. So my faith was getting much stronger. I read my Bible more frequently and I had a passion for mass. But as more time went on and I wasn't always surrounded by faith people, at school for example, my passion left a little bit. I still fully believed everything about the Catholic <laughs> faith and I loved Jesus, 
but I found it easy to not be as focused on him where there were more distractions in my life with my friends. I would go to summer faith camps every year, two of which were held here in Glencomer House, and during these I would regain that fire I felt for my faith, but it would usually get lessened as the year would go on. During the first summer camp I had here at Glencomer, Camp Credov, I heard about Holy Family Mission and I instantly knew a gap year was for me to give a year of my life to Jesus, but I also knew it was for future me to think more about. And then I got to sixth year and in my lukewarmness, I once again felt the pressure to fit in. I started drinking with my friends once I turned 18 and I went to pubs and nightclubs and I started wearing really immodest outfits. The more I gradually turned back to the world for fulfillment and to my friends instead of Jesus, the more comfortable I get, got and the less I felt conviction to stop my immodest behavior. Honestly, a part of me didn't want to change because I was having fun and I knew if I went back to my faith with my full heart that I would feel guilty for how I was acting. So then the time came to apply to Holy Family Mission, but I did not apply because I did not want to face myself and the areas I needed growth in. So obviously I did come to Holy Family Mission, and that was all because of a youth Catholic event called U2000 I attended last summer. When I was faced again with the opportunity to apply to go to Holy Family Mission, even after I thought the applications were closed, and even though I had resolved not to go, I felt this longing for it in my heart deep down. I knew it's where I wanted to be and I needed to be. But there was sort of this tug of war within me, whether to go or not, to put myself out there or to stay in my box, essentially. Ultimately, I resolved, through the help of Jesus, that I would apply and that I could always say no to coming if I got accepted. But honestly, after applying, I think I had already overcome that fear of taking the first step. So my desire for this place was all that remained. And when I got accepted, I can't even tell you how excited I was. And now I'm here, and I really, really feel like my relationship with the Lord and my knowledge of my faith is so much stronger. Being surrounded by people who are in their faith has made such a difference in my life to keep me focused on God when I have strayed. And I know from all my experiences that my happiness truly comes when Jesus is central to my life, when I keep him first, and when I keep him always as my best friend. I want to thank you all so much for listening to me, listening to my testimony. I am praying for you all, and please continue to pray for me and for Holy Family Mission. Thank you.